Welcome, Mr. Coach Schumann. Uh, I want to welcome you to my online recruiting master class. For the first time, this is class number three. And we're starting this uh, simultaneously on three different platforms. Um, obviously, my exclusive members that have signed up for the class, you guys have exclusive access to me on Zoom. You'll be able to ask all the questions that you have. Our first two classes, uh, we covered some amazing things from a recruiting standpoint. Um, so I'm not going to cover those, uh, most of those today, but just to recap, uh, we covered how to get recruited, some techniques and ways to help improve uh, your recruiting process. We covered last week, we covered the ins and outs and everything with respect to the NCAA to give you a, a launching pad and understanding of how the NCAA works, how their process works. And the people that are on Zoom with me uh, that are taking part of class, you'll get the exclusive whiteboard access and the presentation materials. Uh, those of you on YouTube and Instagram, uh, you'll get an opportunity to hear all the things that are going on with respect to the recruiting process. Today, I'm gonna touch on a topic that's obviously something that impacts me that I do every single day. Um, but I wanna help everybody get demystified on the recruiting process with respects to camps and showcases and all-star games. I get so many questions all the time about it. So in this third recruiting masterclass that I'm having, and once these four exclusive classes are done, we'll create um, a membership driven site where you'll be able to go in and get these exclusive materials plus all of the uh, the presentations that I do again those of you who were on with me um, via Instagram okay you don't get to really got to get this stuff other than the people that are on zoom uh, they get to an exclusive masterclass uh, information They'll get all the presentations. Um, they obviously are paying members for this, but we'll make this available to everybody uh, very soon. So I want to cover, and I, I apologize because I got a little cold going on today, but I, I want to cover all the things that are really important uh, to understanding the recruiting process, to making sure that everybody understands what camps and combines and showcases and what they are, uh, what they are it. Uh, what makes them good? What makes them not good? Uh, what are some of the things that you need to understand? So sit back. If you have questions, when we get towards the end of the, the presentation, um, and I'll, I'll even go and show you and tell you my opinions of each one of them. I've been in, in the game since 2005, running my own programs, um, and I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of it. Uh, the recruiting process have evolved significantly and kind of a little historical background with respect to camps, the NCAA rules have continued to change over the last few years, especially. Um, we used to be able to have college coaches at our camps in the spring, going back to the mid to, the, mid to late 2000s. You used to be able to come and watch actually combines and showcases and be able to um, attend them. And uh, that was kind of a boom in the late 2000s. Then we got into a uh, time period where there was really nothing that was allowed in the spring. And now, um, you know, at, uh, kind of the compromise of uh, getting rid of the satellite camps, and I'll explain all this a little bit more, no longer colleges allowed to go off campus to watch uh, to kids go to a camp, uh, this Division One and FCS. They can go to another college to do that. But the exception is if there's a facility that has, that is a multi-use facility that's used for college stadium, <coughs> at the same time that it's a public venue, it can be used. So I use the Aloha Bowl, for example, in Hawaii. That's where the University of Hawaii plays. So it's technically their stadium. So you can kind of, there's a couple of loopholes from that standpoint. What's real important, and I, I want to say hello to everybody over on Instagram as well and, and over on YouTube Live, uh, but what's real important to understand is what these camps, combines, and showcases, and then when you go to college camps, what they do and don't do, what to expect when you go to those, uh, how important those kind of events are in, in the whole entire process, and where you can really, really get a situation where you can begin to uh, understand what's going on from a recruiting standpoint. So um, uh, we're going to give you the opportunity – 
to learn those things today. Um, you're going to get the, the opportunity to learn about the camp process. So let's jump right in it right now. Let's learn as much as we can about the different camps so you can go and understand what's important about those and what isn't. So we'll start off with the very first program. And I'm going to share my screen with the people here on Zoom, but uh, those of you on YouTube and Instagram aren't going to be able to see this, but this is exclusively for our members. Um, combines. And, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to really learn a lot about combines and, and the value <coughs> excuse me, of combines and what they do and what they don't do. So combines um, are a program that they're going to go and test and evaluate the athletes. So testing and evaluation is one of the key components to being able to fund the check. If you watch the NFL combine, understanding what people run the 40-yard dash, uh, getting them evaluated for their skill sets and being send that out to the college program. So what we do at NU NUC Sports we, with our combines, we go and we send those, not just the results, but we also send the athletes information so they can then uh, begin that recruiting process with them. But there's two main things. There's testing and evaluation. I'm going to give you the most important test, okay, that you have to know about, and that's the 40-yard dash. The 40-yard dash, as it does for the NFL athletes, is a make or break, okay? It is a make or break for the athlete from a combine standpoint. And this is something that <coughs> college coaches use as a filtering in or filtering out process. And so what do I mean by filtering in or filtering out? There's so many athletes that they have to evaluate nowadays. It's important to understand the college coaches are going to filter in or filter out athletes based off of what they do. And at the combine, the 40-yard dash and the vertical jump are the two most important tests to evaluating and understanding those athletes, okay? If you have a really good 40-yard dash, that's key, okay? And, and like my man on, on, uh, on Facebook Live here, okay? I don't know how we lost him here, but on Facebook Live, a man right here said he ran a 4.6 yard and a 40 yard dash, 4.64. That's a fast 40 yard dash. So um, th those are things that, that your 40 yard dash is key. It's the single most important test. Your vertical jump is probably your second most important test. So when you go to NUC events, uh, the Nike camps, uh, Rivals camps, and you get tested, that 40 yard dash is something that you need to make sure that you're prepared for and you're ready for in order to do that. Coaches, college coaches cannot be at a combine where testing is being done in the spring. So one of the, now this, I'm talking FCS and BCS. Division three coaches can basically, and most division two coaches could be present at anything they want, so can NAIA schools. And many times, you know, that's what we have a lot at a lot of our combines, division three, division two, and NAIA schools that'll be there. Um, but BCS and FCS schools cannot be present at an evaluation from a testing standpoint, okay? Now they could do it on their own campus and they'll time you, but they won't give you the time and that's how they kind of get around that rule. But where times are being posted, college coaches cannot be at that. So it's important to understand combines are an important part of the recruiting process. Your 40 yard dash is an important part. At the first question uh, from an evaluation standpoint, once they get through your transcript, once they get through your film and how, how, uh, how good they think you are, the next question is, how fast is he? So that is something that you have to develop from a skill set standpoint, and you must go out and get tested on it, all right? Don't go out and get tested until you're ready, but you must go out and get tested on it. They're going to ask where your 40-yard dash is. Now, if you haven't run at one of these events, if you haven't run at one of these events, it's important for you to understand that – you better be running track and field and have a 100-yard dash time because if you don't have a 100-yard dash time, then they don't have any real times on you, and your film's going to have to speak for itself. And if your film is exceptional um, and they're separating between one person and another, that 40-yard dash is going to be the key to, to separating somebody out. Okay, so let's talk about the next thing, which is showcases. Showcases are events. Uh, we run them. Um, there are, there's some run in New Jersey, PSP runs them, uh, that are basically done where they're testing your agility skills, your positional skills and your technique. And then they're going and watching you 
uh, from one to one to two to two standpoint to see your skills, basically see if you're a, a t-shirt warrior, you know, uh, shorts and a t-shirt, how well you move around in, in, from that aspect and, and how athletic you are, your pure raw athletic skills and some of your football positional techniques, okay? Those showcases are very helpful um, for if they have an evaluation component to it. So if coaches are submitting this to college coaches like we do, then that evaluation and ranking players based off of that event, it's, it's definitely helpful. Um, if you go to one and there's nothing really that comes out of it, it's probably a waste of your time. Um, but if you go to one that has college coaches with April 15th to May 30th, which is and during April 15th to May 30th, college coaches can do two very important things. Okay, I just want to stop the share here and just go back. There's two very important things that college coaches could do between April 15th and May 30th. They can evaluate you in person athletically. That means that they can watch you move at your school. They can watch you move at a showcase that doesn't have combine testing. They can watch you move at um, – they could actually watch you uh, uh, move at any track meet or a sporting event. So they can go, that's part of their evaluation period. Oh, shit, that's also awesome. comes as a track meet. April 15th to May 30th. So um, it, it's one of those things that's, that's important for you to understand. They can watch you at those events, okay? And that is a critical, critical thing. All right, so now the next thing that um, – they're able to do within those showcases uh, college coaches are allowed at, at those and the second evaluation that they can have is going to be an academic evaluation so they can actually visit you technically two times okay for an evaluation for athletes in their junior year so that's an important thing to understand so that's why when you see uh, athletes go in and, and uh, get a walk first when they worked out for a college coach that's how that happens person shows up at their school, college coach shows up at their school, they work out for them after school. Um, many times I have coaches that come in either in the morning <coughs> or after school that watch my kids go and actually work out. And those guys will get offers from there. So that's the important thing to understand with respect to showcases. No testing in it, so it's a little different than a combine. Okay. So let's go to like the third thing now. I'm going to go and I'll, I'll reshare my screen here for the people that are are with me on the on the Zoom here. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, so college camps. All right. So now this is probably for most athletes, including underclassmen that are below juniors, college camps and going to them, that in-person evaluation is critical. But before I talk at all about college camps, the first thing I want to make sure people understand is before you ever set foot on any college campus, you want to make sure you find out, unless you're an underclassman with respect, meaning that you're you're, you're a freshman um, and you're, you're a younger athlete uh, where it really is not as important. If you're a sophomore or junior, you want to make sure that you know, begin to understand if that's a process where that school is actually interested in you or you're going to have a chance to play at that university. If that is indeed the case, then going on to a college campus for that college camp is important because that in-person evaluation does net offers, does net opportunity for a lot of the athletes. And the ability to go and net that opportunity is critical. Okay, so it's important for you to be able to, to get on college campuses, find the schools that are the ones that are actually recruiting you, and then go there for an in-person evaluation. There, you know, you could waste your time going to 10 different schools that have no interest in you. So you really need to figure out what schools are interested in. How do you do that? For my first session, I talked about by utilizing Twitter, by utilizing uh, email and phone to talk to the coaches to see what the level of interest is, visiting them at their schools unofficially and officially. It's critical that you can go and then uh, utilize that process to decide what college camps you want to go to. So when you make the most of your time, you're going to a college campus that actually is going to have an opportunity for you to actually get evaluated. Uh, and if in some cases when it's a college scholarship, you can get evaluated for a college scholarship. So that is critical for you to make sure that you understand 
uh, that part of that process. Okay, so getting on a college campus in the summer, if you can go to three to four of them in the summer, picking the right ones, you should definitely go to a college campus to make sure you do that. Um, it's critical to make sure that you go and do that and, and get on campus and get evaluated. Okay, so that's a very important thing. Next thing I want to make sure I go into here um, as I'm doing, trying to share my screen properly with the other people here. Okay, good. Okay, like I talked about this. April 15th and May 30th, they have two evaluations they can do with you. <coughs> One is athletic. And the other is academic. Now, I've seen college coaches that have used it for primarily, okay, they, they use, they come and get the transcript and then they evaluate athletically. So it basically becomes an academic evaluation, but they're evaluating you athletically. So it's important to understand that process right there. April 15th to May 30th, this is right before all the college camps start. A lot of times you'll see college coaches come around and hand out their camp flyers at that time. You want to make sure that you have a discussion to see if they might be interested in you before you go and accept that invite to their, to their college camp. An invite to a college camp does not mean that you have a college offer. I can't believe how many things I read on Twitter where someone says they get invited to a college camp and they, it, they indicate that that's an offer. That is not an offer. That's an opportunity to get evaluated and to compete. Okay, junior days. These happen in the spring. Um, between 30 and 100 athletes can get invited to junior day. They'll have all the juniors uh, on campus um, to be able, it's an unofficial visit, and they'll talk to them about um, the actual college process. They'll talk to them about the opportunity to get recruited, all those kind of things. Uh, with that standpoint, I think I lost my people over here on Instagram. Yeah, I don't know if I lost them here. I'm not sure if that got lost there or not, but so what I was saying about uh, college recruiting visits and going on an unofficial visit, um, I'm going to end that live video there and I'll, I'll restart it uh, real quick here. All right, so we're, start, we're back up. So junior days, 30 to 100 uh, athletes again. If you get invited to a junior day, and you, you should go. Um, if, if you're someone that's really getting evaluated heavily, you should go to junior days, okay? You should go to junior days because that's an opportunity to get a feel for uh, how the coaches are. You get a feel for the campus to see if you like it. You get a feel for the process. Junior days are a great thing to be a part of. If you get invited to a college's junior day, you should definitely go. Here's a little thing. If you're interested in that school and you think that eventually they may not be interested in you right now, but you're going to be someone that's going to grow, get bigger, whatever, technically, they cannot deny you on a junior day. So if you call up and you say you want to go to a junior day, technically, they have to be open to everyone. That's why it's an unofficial visit. So... Otherwise, it would be official visits. So technically, if you want to get your way onto a junior day, you could. All right, let's move on to unofficial visits, other unofficial visits, games. So you can go, if you get invited to a game, you call up, you say, hey, you'd like to uh, come on their campus, go to a game. Um, the, if you're, if there's, you're somebody that they're recruiting, they'll, they'll send you uh, to a game. Um, you'll be able to go to games for free. And those are kind of unofficial visits. They'll take you around the campus. Those things are real important. Okay, if you come up and you schedule a unofficial visit with the college coach, the head coach, the assistant coach, I call these meetings, okay, scheduled 
with coaches and you sit down with them, you have someone give you a tour, that also is an official visit. That's another great opportunity. And here's a little trick and technique that I think athletes should use, okay? It's nice to go on a junior day, but if you really are going to be a top prospect and you want someone to really get to pay attention to you live and in person, um, one of the things I think you should do is you should schedule a junior day that is not during – uh, the junior day, pro their normal junior day process. You go for your own junior day, go up and meet the coach on your own, an unofficial visit, get to know them, get to meet them in person. <coughs> I think that's a critical thing. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. Seven on seven tournaments, high school and club. I love high school seven on seven tournaments, which are in the summertime. In most states, you play with your own high school in the summertime, you, you play on, on college campuses, and if you're a top guy, the college coaches are roaming around looking for players. Those tournaments are great. Usually your high school coach sets that up, okay? If you play in a club team and your club tournament is between April 15th to May 30th, they technically can come for an evaluation during that time period, okay? It is kind of a dicey thing. From a competition standpoint, it does ride the line of what's allowed and what is it. Um, I've heard of college coaches being at those club seven on seven turns between that April 15th and May 30th time frame. The truth of the matter is, I have never seen any college coach at any of the seven on seven club tournaments. And I have been to a multitude of them. So if you're using those for competition from a club standpoint, that's great. Do they have evaluation services like Rivals 24-7 Sports and other places like that that write up top performers? Absolutely they do. And those top performers that get listed, you know, in our 7 on 7 tournament, we're in the process of cutting up the video that we'll post, okay? So you'll have the video of all those tournaments that'll be up there for coaches to be able to see and we'll send it out to them. Those things do happen, but I've never seen coaches at a 7 on 7 tournament I could be wrong. I usually pay attention to those kind of things. I have never seen any. Okay. Recruiting services. I want to make sure I dive pretty deeply into recruiting services because this is one of the things that is often misunderstood and um, not known. Let's start first with NCSA, National Collegiate. It used to be National Collegiate Scouting Association. Now it's next, I don't know, something else. They charge services of, um, I don't know, anywhere between 1200 We used to be partners, full disclosure, with them for many, many years, and we were we got a commission uh, when they landed athletes that went to, um, that signed up from our camps. It was, uh, uh, when we first started with them in 2007, I thought it was a great business. Um, I don't know nowadays if, that is as effective as it used to be because emailing used to be very effective. That's kind of the, one of the main premises of how they get their information out. I don't know if it is as effective anymore. I have heard information where the open rates of college coaches are below 10%, probably below 5%. Um, so I don't know if that is very effective. Uh, you should treat that a case by case basis. If you're struggling for money, I do not recommend doing it. If you're someone that has money to burn, I hey, if you have money to burn, you can go do a lot of things. So uh, that's really up to you, okay? Uh, other recruiting services, there's a lot of recruiting services like them. I think it's important to get and understand the recruiting process so you can then take the actions like I've gone through in my master class and apply them to customize your recruiting process to your own needs and be able to help yourself to then get recruited. Okay, um, it's important for that part of the process to be a critical thing that will help you in order to get from recruiting. Getting help, finding proper mentors in the recruiting process is good. Okay, one thing you gotta understand is that no two persons recruiting experience is alike. And if no two persons recruiting experience is alike, even if you have a mentor, it might be different than somebody else's. So it's important for you to get educated on the process as much as possible. Um, I posted my first recruiting class, men mentor class, so you can see it. <coughs> Go watch that, learn how to get yourself recruited. Okay, I think doing yourself and working with your high school coach, 
Um, that is a critical thing. B building the relationship with your high school coach or someone that is on your high school coach's staff that can help you with the recruiting process is key. Okay, do not leave your high school coach out of the recruiting process. Go to him, get him as an ally to help you get to where you want to be. He's going to want you to be realistic, okay? You could shoot for moon and the stars, but your high school coach knows what your ability is in most cases. If you think that you're, you're going to have a bad relationship with your high school coach and then you're still going to get recruited, recruited you're wrong because in the end – the college coach is going to talk to your high school coach and find out what uh, you think about, uh, he thinks about you, and he's going to then give that to the college coach. So if he says nice things about you, you're going to be more likely to get recruited than if he says something negative about you. So make sure you're in the good graces of your high school coach. You're in a position that he's going to say positive things about you um, and, and make sure you understand that that is a key component to getting recruited. Make the high school coach your ally. Make your head coach your ally. Make him understand your dreams and what you're doing to fulfill those and have him evaluate where he thinks you are so you can get an opportunity, um, you know, from that standpoint. I, I agree, by the way, on Instagram. I'm not a, you know, uh, I, I don't think NCSA is really a necessary thing anymore. Um, we focus on, and I tell people all the time, we're focused on the event side. So I do these courses for you, for you, so you can learn how to handle your recruiting process. I, you know, the way I always view things, and I've owned my own business for a long time, but head coach, you've got to take charge of your future. I don't leave my future in the hands of anybody else. So you shouldn't leave your future in the hands of another service. If you do that, you're setting yourself up for failure. Okay. One of the most interesting things, and I, and I think this is the most fun part of the recruiting process, but I don't know that it helps you always from a, an offer standpoint. If you're an underclassman, it definitely helps because it's football-based. If you're an upperclassman and you're already senior, it may not actually help you, and it, it, although a lot of our All-Star games have. Um, it's just pure fun. But All-Star games are becoming a huge part because we stream them live and they're able to be captured video and it's an actual game situation. Sending those all-star games out to college coaches against top tier talent is fastly becoming a thing that will help you in the recruiting process. They could see you playing actual football, okay, and attending an all-star game. We, for years, I mean, we were the big, big guys in the combine space. There's a lot of people in there now uh, we used to have 20,000 athletes come through the combines. And that was how we used to help everybody get recruited. And we started doing showcases. Now our big move is to help it also again because it's actually playing football. We actually get to see people of top talent play against each other in an all-star game. Uh, it's prestigious. You get chosen um, and you get to compete against each other. If you're an underclassman, that video now shows you not just in your league, if you go to a high small school or something like that, you now have the opportunity to showcase yourself on a much larger stage. And for the most part, it's usually at a great place where you, your family can go on a vacation as well. So uh, I think all-star games are great opportunities from a recruiting standpoint. <coughs> College coaches cannot attend those um, because of the NCAA rules. But most people video, obviously, just like you would video a high school football game, you're videoing an all-star game. It's the same exact thing. It's exactly what you'll utilize uh, within the recruiting process. So I highly recommend getting to All-Star Games. I think that's key. That's critical. If you get invited to one, that's an important thing. Okay. I want to talk about information and filter. So what is all this part of the process? What does this do for you? How does this change for you from a recruiting standpoint? Okay. The biggest thing that college coaches are using all of this, combine, showcases, evaluation, information, all of this stuff, what are they using it for? It's simple. It's called a filtering in and filtering out process. Filtering in the players that they think they might evaluate, filtering out the players that they have no interest in or little interest in. Okay, and I have some really good, I don't want to name the schools, but I go and visit in the spring and I watch film with these guys. And they have um, a layering, pro a level process where they have A, B, C, D, okay? If you're an A prospect, 
that you're a prospect that they're offering. If you're a B prospect, you're a prospect that they're thinking about offering, okay, but they may need to see more. If you're a C prospect, you're a prospect that they haven't ruled out yet, but maybe you haven't developed, maybe you play against lower level competition, all these kind of things, but it's an opportunity still that, that you're in the mix. If you're a D, they're not gonna recruit you at all. Okay, so this is something that you need to find out. Now, every school has a different way of doing it, but if you're an A prospect, you can expect an offer if you haven't got one very soon from that school. If you're a B prospect, you need to figure out what you have to do to get it to that next level. And it's important to understand. So if you're a B prospect, um, how many people do they have rated as A's? How many A's have they offered? It's critical to understand that and know that so that you know where you are. The whole process of recruiting is filtering in people they like, and filtering out people they don't think they're gonna recruit. And that constant flow dictates it is a very fluid process. Okay, my, uh, I have a, one of NUC Sports longtime team leaders uh, under me, learned under my process, was a Penn State recruiting coordinator last year, now is a running backs coach at, at Albany, uh, EJ Barthel. Uh, coach Barthel, um, when he goes through that process, He's always trying to figure out, is this guy someone that could be an impact player or not at the level? And if they're not yet there, can they get there before they offer? <clears throat> so that's a big, big part of, of the process. When I, when I speak with Coach Morris down at Monmouth, he's got that ABCD process. Um, and Rutgers probably has their own process, UConn, so on and so forth. Uh, it's important for you to understand that, and that's where the communication from what I talked about in our first master class the key is that communication to understand where you sit, okay? So as I'm going through that, that, that information, that filtering out and filtering is important. Okay, how important is all this? And, and I want to talk the next 10 minutes, the last 10 to 15 minutes on this, this process uh, in this master class. How important is, is events in the recruiting process, okay? And if I was to rate... If I was to rate events in the recruiting process, okay, and say one being that you 100% should go there, 10 being less. So the top thing that you should go to, there's no doubt about it, number one most important thing is going to college camps. I can't emphasize that enough, okay? I run my own business. That's obviously counter to what I, but I cannot tell you that going to a college camp is not a critical thing. That's why it's important to know which schools are interested in you. Because if you go to a college camp and you don't, and they're not interested in you, it's just a giant waste of your time. It really is a giant waste of your time. So you need to make sure you understand. Um, who all does the All-Star Games? A question on Instagram. Uh, we run All-Star Games. If you go to ncsports.com, you'll see stuff. Um, there's probably about five or six companies. Blue Gray runs one. Um, U.S. Army runs one. There, you know, U.S. Army on Armour, you're going to have to be a, a top-tier guy, and that's for seniors primarily. For those underclassmen games, we're one of the few people that run underclassmen games uh, for, for athletes. I think offense, defense runs them. There's a few. You should try to get to a couple if you can. Okay, so college camps are really, really quick. I think that's number one. Number two, I really, really, truly believe – Okay, getting tested and going to a combine, and if you go to two or three, that's critical because it gives you raw numbers. Getting raw numbers is important that you can share with everybody. Okay, so that's really, really a critical thing, getting raw numbers, so going to combine. Number three, okay, the evaluation period events. Okay, evaluation of period events. What do I mean? Showcases between April 15th and May 30th. Uh, evaluating or working out for a college coach on your high school when he comes to visit you with one of his evaluation, uh, getting a high school coach, to, a college coach to come to your track meets if you run track, see how fast you are, or if you do another sport. That April 15th to May 30th time period is an important period for you to be able to get that information out there. That's key. Okay, number four, which is real important, is so evaluation period events are what I said was number three. Um, number four, and I think this is this is the fastest rise, riser, okay, and I think it could end up being number two behind college camps. All-star games are critical, 
because it's actual games. Okay. Now, I take all this out of it above college camps because I'm just going through events today. So I want you to understand your film is the number one thing. Okay. So I don't want to, you know, because today's class is about events and to, the final class is about um, your film and doing your highlight tape and all those kind of things. So I don't want to kind of get ahead of myself, but the number one thing is having great film. If you don't have great film, none of this other stuff matters. Okay. It's a matching process of filtering in and filtering out. But, but, once we're, we're, we're making the assumption your film is, is good and for, for the argument's sake here, for whatever level you're going to, and I'm giving you the, the, the five most important things. Number one being college camps. Number two being combines. Number three being evaluation period events or opportunities. <coughs> okay. And number four is all-star games. Okay, number four is all-star games. I'm going to just share this real quick. My people in my master class, so they get all this information. A man, James Estes, who's on the line over there. All right, and there's a few others. I want to make sure he gets that info so he sees that. Okay, James. All right, so we got the uh, – and, and James, I just want to make sure you can hear me. I know I'm talking a lot here. I think you are, and there's a couple other people on the line, Bergy, and a couple others I see here. Um Make sure you get, if you, you just want to hit me on the yes on the chat, certainly let me know. Uh, although I think you might be on the, the uh, phone line today. Um, so it's important for you to go to those all-star games. I think those all-star games, I can send those that film out. You can make highlights of it. It's critical to be able to continue to use that process for you, okay? So all-star games is a definite, to me, an absolute no-brainer. Um, it costs a little bit more money other than the senior games, but that's guys that are committing. But it's a vacation for your family, and it's a chance to get evaluated. I just think it's a great use of a few hundred bucks. Um, and a lot of times, if you have a problem, like I always, if someone has a hardship, and, and they send me, you know, that they're really hurting for money, I, you know, I usually give them 50% discount on that kind of thing. You just say, hey, make sure you can get there. The final and the fifth thing is showcases. Okay, I think showcases are good. They can get – if they have evaluation, I don't think they have as much weight as the other four. Um, because college coaches believe that they do their own evaluation better than anybody else. So if someone gives them an evaluation on a player, they might take it, you know, if they have the right height size and all that kind of stuff. But it's a lot harder, okay? And then number six, and, and, and this is really the last, is seven on seven, okay? Seven on seven, to me, is the lowest, it helps. Um, first of all, the club circuit, there's not that many coaches at it, number one. Number two, um, in a lot of cases, uh, the, the quarterback dictates what happens and is so important in it. So, yeah, you get an evaluation of the quarterback. But it's not realistic, you know, four seconds. I mean, you got to have the ball out a lot earlier than that. There's no run game. There's no blocking. So it's good. As a high school coach, we, we use it for, for help our kids get better. But I don't see it as a, a great evaluation tool, an elite-level evaluation tool. Some people like it. I think it provides a lot of false positives for people in the evaluation process. At the high school level, when you go to high school 7-on-7 seven -seven tournaments, I do think they're better. If you look at it from a recruiting standpoint, when you're on a college campus standpoint. But to me – all of these things, including 7-on-7, the most important about it is getting out there and competing. The ability to get out there and compete and show what you can do, uh, the ability to do that is so critical, is so important. Um, playing in the – I always tell athletes this all the time. If you don't play baseball and lacrosse, you should 100% be running track in the spring because coaches can – you'll get faster. Coaches can actually go and evaluate you there. You have concrete times and distances that will tell you how fast you are. <clears throat> if I know someone runs 10.8 in the 100 meter dash, I know he's a division one athlete speed wise. If he runs 11.8, I know he's a division three athlete speed wise. Okay, it's important to understand the track times are helpful and you'll get faster for your season. So I always make my athletes that don't play baseball or don't play lacrosse and if they love those sports, you should go and do it by all means. But 
If you don't play those, you want to be have to be a Division One athlete. You should be running track. That's the bottom line. Everyone always says, "Why are athletes in Texas and Florida and Georgia so good?" They all run track down south. They all run track. That's where their speed comes from, from running track. Okay, so these are the most important things. I think basketball is a great sport and wrestling is a great sport as well in the wintertime, but I'm talking specifically about the spring. These are important things as far as getting into the recruiting process. What I do want to do is take a few seconds to answer any questions that you might have. Um, if, if, you, uh, if you have a question, please make sure you go ahead and ask it of me right now. I'll leave the floor open for about five minutes here if we, if we have enough questions. And I'll answer any questions anybody has about the recruiting process. Uh, James um, and uh, Berkey and a couple other guys that are on there. If you have any questions, certainly ask them of me. Okay. Cool. Um, yep. Okay. So, how important is the 40 yard dash for linemen? Okay. This is a great question. 40 yard dash for linemen. The 20 is really the most important time, but in high school, it's very hard for guys to get that time. So, I'll put it to you like this If you are six foot five and you're 320 pounds, unless you run a blatantly slow 40, uh, your 40 yard dash is not gonna be as huge as how quick your feet are, okay? But a good 40 is going to be a separator. So if you're six, two and a half, 285, 300 pounds, and you can run a five, 140, that's definitely gonna show that you have explosiveness. The 40 yard dash for linemen <coughs> combined with their broad jump, vertical jump, will tell me what level of explosiveness they have. A lot of linemen get caught in the in the bench press. And I do think the bench press is important to show how strong you are and committed in the weight room, but doesn't necessarily dictate how well you're gonna do uh, at the college level as a lineman, okay? Because some guys with really long arms in high school aren't gonna bench as many reps at 225. Next question. How does recruiting and prep schools work as far as getting to a D1 school? So prep schools, I think you're, I'm assuming post, you're talking about post-grad schools. Um, you know, there's some really good ones in New Jersey, and I know in the Northeast there's some really good ones. Uh, depending on the school, they'll help you with their recruiting process. Um, how well you perform will dictate that. So if you need to go to a prep school to develop for a year, it's definitely worthwhile doing that. Um, that's where you get that fifth year. You see a lot of it <coughs> prep schools. Uh, in New Jersey and in the Northeast, where that does happen, they end up going to a Division One school. Definitely, um, there's a ton of prep school kids that go on to Division One programs. Any other questions that I can answer for you? Okay, I did see we had a couple here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and see where we go. I had a question about the All-Star Games, um, NUC Sports. We definitely run All-Star Games. You can go to NUCAllAmerican.com, see more. Uh, or NUCAllWorld.com should have one as well. Um, okay, if you got it. Yeah. Paying for recruiting services. Well, that's one of the other questions I got here. So, um, okay, so let me ask this question before I go to paying for recruiting. How important are one-on-ones between wide receiver and DBs to be evaluated? Play both positions, but I feel the wide receiver has a major advantage over the DB. So that's 100% uh, true because they know where they're going and they got the route from uh, the quarterback. So it's important to understand that one-on-ones, again, like I talked about the showcases part as being the sixth most important thing. Um, I do think it shows you how well you move in shorts and a t-shirt, uh, how important that is to, you know, when you get smacked in the mouth and hit, I don't know how important that is, but it does show us how you can move. A lot of guys at college camps can get offers by doing great in one-on-ones. So um, I've seen it in our events. I've seen it in, on college camps. So it's definitely important. 
Uh, what's up, my man Pete? I see you on there. Um, let's see, we got. Yeah, okay, so this is a, a accolade. I'll, talk, I'll address this one. Accolades, getting in the newspaper, stats. How important are those things in the recruiting process? Those are PR. Those things are really PR that um, kind of helps with the prestige of what you do as an athlete. Um, definitely get your name out there. Uh, college coaches. Now, they used to pick up the newspapers. We don't pick up newspapers anymore. Everything's online, so we can get that information. We can go on Twitter. We can type in your name and see, what, you know, see how you're performing in a year. I think stats can be deceptive based on the level you play against. The biggest indicator for recruiting is, I always say this, for your position, height, size, speed, okay? Height, size, speed. Now, quarterback, that's part of it. Um, but height, size, speed are the first things people are going to look at, and then they go from there. There's plenty of short people that are playing in the NFL, okay? So I don't want people to go and say, oh, you know, so – if you're short, speed is your key. Speed, 40-yard dash, quickness. Okay, so height, size, speed. Those are important things from a recruiting standpoint. Athleticism, pure athleticism are, are, are really important. Um, okay. <coughs> offensive lineman. Here, I get a question here about offensive line. So, uh, Offensive linemen are so hard to find. <clears throat> it's very hard to find great offensive linemen. If you're a really good offensive lineman and you have measurables that are right height size, uh, I think that's key. Defensive linemen, there's many more of them, and it's hard, and, and great ones, okay, um, are going to be so exceptional. So it's, it's much harder to make it as a D lineman than if you're an exceptional offensive lineman with the right height and size, okay? How does being ranked help with the recruitment? So here's the ranking. Here I'm going to debunk the ranking process like I did in the very first session. Rankings, people get ranked when they get offers. Very, very rarely, one out of 100 times, is someone ranked before they have an offer. Get offers, you'll get ranked. Hope that helps for you, by the way, uh, Mr. Shaw. Let's see, the next question I have. Um, yeah, so height and size, and again, so I had a question about someone who's five shorter, on the shorter side, 5'10", an offensive lineman, um, and they weigh a, a light amount. If you're an offensive lineman, you weigh a light amount, more than likely, you're not going to play offensive line at the college level. Um, so you may play that position in high school, in college, you may end up being a defensive tackle, a linebacker. I don't know, depending on what your speed is. In high school, you need to play whatever, just like you do when you get to college, whatever helps the team be successful. You'll get recruited by being a great teammate and doing a great job on the field. It doesn't work the other way around. You don't dictate to the coach where you play because you think you might get recruited. You go the, you go and um, do what you're supposed to do and the college coaches will find that and, and find the right spot for you, okay? Probably half the starting receivers in college were quarterbacks in high school um, and they probably ran the ball most of the time and they still found a way to get a Division One scholarship uh, as a receiver, okay? Then you should play D-line. Okay, so um, at the college level, that is. Any other questions that I can answer? Do college coaches pay attention to lifting ability when recruiting? Strength is important, but athleticism trumps strength uh, because they'll feel like they can develop the strength of an athlete. So strength shows your commitment in a weight room. Uh, it's going to help you in high school be the best player you can. There's no doubt about it. 
it's not going to have a huge impact in recruiting unless that strength is exceptional. I mean, are you a 400 pound bencher and a 600 pound squatter? I mean, those kind of numbers are, are big. Um, yeah, 6'1 or 180 for receivers, pretty good, good size, um, as, especially in high school. What weight do you think is a good weight for a defensive end? Uh, it's weight relative to your height and then your speed as a defensive end. So ideally, I want my defensive ends in college to be six foot four, 230 pounds in high school that could run the four seven forty. Um, the, that's the guys at the best level. Is being multi-sport, hey, Pete asked me a good question here, is being a multi-sport athlete more or less attractive to college scouts? <coughs> so, um, being a multi-sport athlete will develop your overall athleticism. Um, college coaches like it because it shows someone that's usually a good teammate that isn't just focused on one thing, but it will have little effect in most cases, in most cases on your recruiting with the exception of a couple sports. If you run track and you run a fast hundred meter dash or a high hurdler or jumper, that could be helpful. If you're a basketball player showing how you move, that could definitely be helpful. Um, a, a fantastic wrestler could show his balance and strength. If he's like a heavyweight wrestler or, or at the two twenty something range, um, but as far as dictating a scholarship in that sport, it doesn't necessarily have the case. Now I've had receivers that and quarterbacks that were athlete quarterbacks that college coaches came and watched them play basketball. And I've had college coaches come and watch them run track. Those sports seem to have an impact um, possibly in, in, in recruiting. If you're like tall and they want to see how you can move in those kind of things where your competitiveness is. Uh, what's the shortest uh, – let me see here. What's the shortest running uh, running back could be to go D1? There, that's a, actually a pretty good question. You know, running back is in one position where your shortness is not a disadvantage, maybe slot receiver too. But there is a – like if you're five foot four, it's going to be very hard to go to 1A. Um, five foot five, very hard. Five foot six, very hard. Five foot seven, then you could start as a running back, possibly. They probably generally like him somewhere five eight or above. Running back usually has to be how good you are and how fast you are. Any camps come into San Diego? We had just a bunch of camps out there. I'm sure there are some. We have one in Jersey this weekend. Um, well, definitely how soon can you tell what level a kid can play at? Okay, so that's a good question. How soon is it before you can tell? Well, nowadays you got guys getting offers in eighth grade. Um, as soon as you hit maturity level, physically, puberty, and um, you're in a position there. Let's see, are we back on? Hold on a second. I don't know if I'm on or not anymore. Every time the phone rings, it like cuts off my uh, my live here. Let's go. Let's go at. It. I'll wrap this up here with this last question. Um, uh, that, thanks for coming to the prequel. But you can start seeing them as soon as they hit puberty, and once they hit puberty and they start getting the size of, of a man, you can start to see what kind of level those athletes are. Uh, I thank you all for being on. Um, I want to wrap it up here. Uh, next week. You know, you'll be able to go in our master class, check, my, check your emails, go to ncsports.com if you want to get in for the last class. Certainly can. I hope it was helpful for you guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you.